but not so high pitch when he was calling us when we were kids uh, in the mall or wherever. We didn't go to the mall that often, but that was his signal to us. Whoop, whoop. And I heard Minnie Pearl. She came out. She had that thing where she always went, Hodge, howdy. And I read somewhere that you got to have a shtick. So I just stole my dad's whoop, whoop. Here we are at show number 103. Thank you for being here. Woo. Something's going to happen and it could be good. Something's going to happen and it could be good. swap this Tuesday. That's where I got this beautiful shirt and probably this dress too, frankly. The first Tuesday of every month in Gulfport, we have a clothing swap and you can bring some clothes to donate to the swap, bring a dollar or something to donate to Casa. It's theoretically a fundraiser, but I think it's more of a fun time. Okay, uh, my first guest today on the Laura Shepherd Show is Mary L. Westcott. To the stage! Yay! Hi, Lord. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yay! I'm good. I'm gonna give you a little clip on little Mikey here. Okay. And uh, there's this one. Okay. Mary. Yes. Thank you for coming. I uh, met you at, I got sort of sucked into a group, sucked in as might be about. There was a friend visiting here and somebody picked her up to take her to a Law of Attraction group. And I don't know how many of you all are familiar with the Law of Attraction, but basically it's Abraham Hicks and uh, what you ask for is what you get. And um, it's, it's a whole, you know, a mindset of positivity and asking for what, what you want and not putting anything in there that you don't want. Yeah, so it's all positive. So here, here I was, and a friend was visiting, and another friend was coming to pick her up to go to this meeting, and I thought, I'll go to the meeting. Why not? It would seem very serendipitous. So I jumped in the car with no phone and no pocket and no shoes, and I met some lovely people, yourself included. And while we were there, you told me that you're a writer. That's right. That's right. And so uh, this is one of the books you've written. This is my first self-help book. I was a poet uh, before I was a uh, mm -hmm. self-help writer, 
and I was a poet while I was in public health for about maybe 20, 25 years. Um, so this is actually my first, I call it real book. <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you, let me ask you a quick, when you say you were a poet, did you, did you go out to poetry slams and, yes. and, and recite I went poetry? Up, yes, I, I recited poetry. Do you have a poem um, you can submitted. slam off right now? Sorry, we didn't, that's, a, that's not much of a, that's not nice, is it? I told you she was going to talk about <laughs> yes, books, now I want to, yeah. anyway, well, we there's actually on. poems in the book. Okay, um, is there one from the book that you'd like to read and then we'll let you talk more about the book? Oh, wow, I really hadn't thought you about hadn't it. Thought, I know, see, I'm always sneaking, <laughs> sneaking, sneaking questions. But I didn't in. know you were a poet first. There's so much to know about Mary. <laughs> okay, um, oh my gosh. I, I, Relax, I, we right. can, yes. Okay, um, let's see. I'll read about the Costa Rican rainforest. I don't know, I like this one. It says, in a certain form. So poetry can be either written in form or just kind of free verse. And this one is This a is form. in a form, which I uh, can't remember what it is. It might be the pantoon, since I've oh. been yeah, mostly doing self-help. Does the one-eyed moon hear our cries? Toucans startle like first kisses. All things die, all things rise. The daylight brings parrots reprise. The green poison dart frog insists. The one-eyed moon hears our cries. The di drizzle drips on ferns disguised in faint fog shifting in the leaping mist. All things die, all things rise. Volcanoes erupt to fire orange skies. Clouds hover in the mossy mist. O oh, one-eyed moon, hear our cries. Ocelots swim, spiders improvise, wrap their bodies, thin webs, persist. All things die, all things rise. Haze obscures the kept Quetzal sighs. Spirits linger while monkeys tryst. O oh, one-eyed moon that hears our cries, all things will die, all things will rise. It's called Costa Rican Rainforest. When I was in Costa Rica, I wrote this poem yeah. in my poetry years. <laughs> in your poetry years. So you went on from poetry to writing books. Yes. And what, what was the impetus for this particular book that you're writing? Well, I was in a relationship. Which is called, okay, it's called From Darkness to Embracing the Light. A Spiritual Guide to Reclaiming Your Life After Soul-Crushing Relationships. Oh dear. Okay, I know it sounds heavy and dark, but um, <laughs> I, it, it is, it, but there are... Uh, Why are you people laughing Approximately... We're laughing at you, Laura. <laughs> there are, uh, surprising to me, there are approximately oh, 100 million people in the United States that get caught up in these toxic relationships. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, it's really a, a much bigger issue than I knew. And the reason I found out about it was I got caught up in one of these relationships and I uh, was seeing someone and she said, uh, a therapist, and she said to me, I want you to look up covert narcissists. And I went, Whoa. you know, what covert is narcissist? narcissist. And I went, oh, okay. So I looked it up, I started doing research and within a week I was out of that relationship because <laughs> things happened and so forth but it really started to open my eyes and then I read like 25 other books about it and then I got on an online forum which has many subgroups it's called Quora many many subgroups where people write in how do I get over this um, is this normal you know how do I you know people actually go through PTSD a form of PTSD well, yeah. as a result of it and I had no idea about that so while I was healing I felt like I was, this spirit came down and said, write this book, because I just sat down, I was in a dumpy apartment, I just sat down, and I just wrote for okay, like now hold two on or three second. months. I love it, all sorts of people on the show, and they're always like, and I got this feeling, what do you mean spirit came down and told, how did I that, mean, I didn't you plan that? anything, I just, honestly, I didn't plan anything, I didn't think it out, I didn't even have an outline, I just sat down and wrote, which is not normal for me, because usually with poems, I, Sometimes uh, they would come through, you know, just come through like a download from spirit. But other times I'd be struggling to write the poem. This one was just came through. So you sat down at a table and started, and started writing, writing freehand. It started writing freehand. And how And long? then it was like 150 pages later and it was actually very disorganized at that point. It was so I had it um, so it's it's got it's in a different kind of format. It, I have um, a little bit about, first of all, I start with the unity um, powers, which are, um, there's like 12 powers, love, determination, strength. And so I said, this is how I use this power to oh, heal. Fun. Yeah, yeah. And then I came up with a healing method, 
So I have 25 healing methods, and then I had a poem, and then I talked about my experience and what I went through. And, you know, I talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I figured if I'm going to be authentic, I have to talk about what I went through so that when people, you know, read it to heal, they will know that I'm just not talking from high on the mountain because a lot of therapists don't really know how how it is to be in this kind of relationship. It's very different than just, you know, while well, you're with a bad, you know, a bad guy and, or a bad mm -hmm. woman and, you know, it's, it's very, very different. It's the personality mm -hmm. disorder has characteristics that are actually were terrifying to me when I started reading about them, like lack of empathy. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and I call it the three E's, lack of empathy, entitlement, and, and they exploit others. So, exploit, entitlement, and lack of empathy. And there's other, many other wonderful qualities such as uh, lying and cheating. Well, okay. I mean, just, oh my goodness. But okay, anyway, so, so, but I said to myself, because so many people were stuck, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. said, I don't want to be stuck. Right. I want to heal. Right. I want to move past it. Now, how am I going to move past it? What are the healing methods I'm going to use? How am I going to step past it? And then how am I going to convince others to step past it? So this yeah. book is trying to, and all my posts on Quora, which I have uh, 2.3 million posts on Quora. Okay, on Quora. Quora I is Q-U-O-R-A. Q-U-O-R-A. Okay, it's a new online, online forum, 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 and people post on anything. Under Politics, which name? philosophy. Under what name? Oh. Uh, Actually, my real name, which is Mary, Mary Westcott, is the L in it? Yes, Mary yes. L. Westcott. I'm and this, this is your your. That's my pen name, which means, honestly, I do have uh, specifics in here, but not specifics about any individual. But I really wanted to be. I was actually afraid to publish the book because there's so much personal stuff in there that and it's I just spilled out my guts in a, in a way um, and so I was afraid but um, people convinced and me that you would help written, people. Had you ever written no. a book before? Well, a uh, poetry, but that's not, not the same. right. Not yeah. a whole no, book. No, I've book. never written a whole book, and I didn't. And then have, how did you get from this stack of notes? Well, that you said were disorganized to this. Well, I I was in I'm in Unity, and so I went to a Unity writer, and she said Unity I'm, is what. Unity is a church, so like you, Unity yeah. of Gulfport and okay. First Unity mm -hmm. in here okay. in this area. And she said, I like the idea of doing it under the powers, you know, right. the 12 give powers, it some sort of structure. to give it some structure. And that's when it started being, having some structure right. instead of just kind of like free flowing. It's still a little complex with, you know, a poem and my experience and, and the healing method and all that, but it's not that complex. I mean, I, you know, it's not that difficult. So she gave me that idea, and then I also had a content writer, and she helped a lot. I can't remember all her, but her daughter had been married to a, someone with narcissistic personality wow. disorder. So she loved editing this book, and she made lots of good suggestions, and she she tried to get, make suggestions to her daughter, you know, like yeah. dropping it without telling her what she was doing. Right. So I felt, um, so that made me feel really good. So you feel like already I was helping people. One person, already one person was being helped. Right. And that's, and actually, that was my purpose because I'm a pretty grounded person. You don't really know me, but I'm pretty grounded. And I was really shaken up. I mean, when I, when all things went down and I found out about these characteristics and I was actually living with someone with these characteristics I was really scared I was scared I was um, shaken and this because book my helped faith, you, you yeah. know, it, it really shook me and then um, and then I kind of gradually figured out how to how to heal there are, there are a lot of books on emotional healing but there's not much on spiritual or energetic healing mm -hmm. so I tried to put new things in here that people you know, the average person would not know about. Maybe a unity person might know about, but a lot of people in the public right. wouldn't know about. Well, thank you yeah. so much. You're Mary. welcome. Um, that is, uh, this I'm is gonna, on Amazon. This one is on Amazon. And I think that's really amazing that you did that. And we have a surprise for you is that she's written another book. This is not the end. And, but we'll get you back up to talk thank about that so one in much, a minute. Thank you so much, Laura. Yay. Uh, Thanks, Mary. Uh, things, yeah, great. And you all enjoy that. Uh, I want to give a quick little um, rundown here on some of the uh, local fruits and vegetables that are around right now. I don't know why I do this, but it seems like in every show. These are uh, local avocado off a tree that um, 
that's a couple blocks down on your this kind and then there's also these black ones and they fall smash on the ground but i think all the rest of it will be delicious occasionally one comes down it's not quite right these are the black ones this is a black sapote not ripe bananas off my friend duke's banana tree and these little plum guys who i don't know what they're called but it's a great huge tree there and they kind of taste like time. <laughs> but after the show we might do a little bit we can cut up one of these mangoes and i'll pass these little there's something plums when they're really ripe they're like those um red cherry things that have that turpin anyways i really should get the names all where is about look them up quick tell me the, the botanical names okay i just wanted to show you all the the abundance of that's around me Berkeley and Tony, come to the stage, please. Mm. Berkeley, Tony, and Zafod Hall. I'm going to go ahead and. All right, is every, are we all in the picture? Are we all in the picture? This is a great, great afternoon we've been here you go Ooh. that's sounding very nice i think i put this in front so you can hear you i'm not really good at this okay see the volume level there is enough how does it does it sound can you hear it out there i hear just fine yeah i think it's very i think oh, it's perfectly yeah. loud Are you in c or f, or f? f. Okay, now some of you regulars, uh, what you want us to do? Yeah, just if each of you can move your chair a little bit closer so I can get the instruments. Okay, let's get Sorry. a little closer. I, you know, come closer to me. Oh, I'll hold that for us. It's so line, exciting. I draw the line at you sitting on my lap. Okay, I well, I, I don't know that it will. Okay, <laughs> you want to come a little closer to me? Yes. And then bring more and bring your instrument. This is an instrument that, okay, those of you who you may have met both. Tony and Berkeley up here with different bands, the Stingrays, uh, who else? Tortugas. The Tortugas. Yeah, the Tortugas on the show. Okay, well, anyways, you've been on the show. Seems to me you've been on the show in many different guises, but right now you're on the show as a pod harp crafter and player. So why don't we go ahead and play a song, Okay. and then we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I'm going to jump out of the way. Some balance good between a bunch. You tell me, go like this if I need to turn up. So I'm gonna play the first song which I wrote on this instrument um, after building it and learning how to play it. Um, and I did discover early on that you can't write a, an angry or mean song on a harp. It just doesn't lend itself to those kind of emotions. So I, I wrote this, it's a lullaby, and actually kind of segues into um, Mariel's book in a way because it was inspired by, I was actually doing some therapy and the therapists were talking about healing the inner child. And this, the therapist said, well, what would your inner child want? And I thought, thought about it and you know, came back to him. And I said, I think an accepting angel. So that's the name of the song. Accepting angel.
I invented this instrument. Uh, it's made from the seed pod of you a. You want to turn it uh, just so people can. Don't no, 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 you don't want to turn it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it looks thing? like a harp on this yeah. side. Don't you worry. Let's see if I can turn it. There we go. Just for a minute. That's good. Yeah. But it's from the, the seed pod, seed pod of the queen palm tree, which if you live in this part of the world, you know, they're pretty much, you find them everywhere, all over the place. And when I first moved to Florida, I found one in the yard thinking it was like a leaf and I picked it up and went, oh my God, it's a piece of wood. So I started making things out of them, sculptures and whatnot. And then I have made instruments before, mostly out of bamboo. So I've, I've, I've done a lot of actually studying about making instruments out of ah. oddball things. So it didn't it wasn't a one-off. No, one off. no yeah, it wasn't a okay. one-off. You had some so, free yeah. skills. And so I stuck a string on one and started plucking on it and went, this has got potential. And so this is about the fifth iteration from starting the project. But it's been absolutely fascinating to think of it and then, learn, then make it and then learn how to play it. You yeah, know? So I'm pretty much inventing the technique as I go along. It's, it's based upon, the idea really came from the African Kora, which is K-O-R-A, it's a, it's a harp of, a folk harp from West Africa which also has strings going up two sides. And so you play it like this in two ways. And I mean, the beauty of it, which if you're, you know, music at all, it's, it's a pentatonic, I mean, it's a, it's a diatonic instrument, or it's one scale, it's like a folk harp. So I have, you know, the scale goes back and forth, note to note there. But what that means is when you do that, is that every three notes on, in, in any place is one of the chords in the key that you're in. So that makes it really easy to play, actually. You know, it's a very friendly instrument in that way to play like that. So the first thing I discovered was Papa Bell's Cannon. But it's it sounds fun. like a piano. It's right there at the oh. end. It does kind of have like a like or like a harpsichord or something. But I mean that was the amazing lucky thing about the project was that it actually sounds pretty good. I mean, it's not real loud on its own, but I mean, and it's not enough to play. what are you using for strings? Are these guitar these strings? Are, these are classical guitar strings. Classical guitar strings. Right. Do you want to play us another number? Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to do, we'll do, we'll do an instrumental that Tony and I sort of wrote together. It's called the Camel and the Hairdresser. <laughs> and now, and I've never had a lot of experience writing instrumental music. And of course, what do you call an instrumental song? And there's no chorus to name it after anything. Tony is like very gifted at coming up with very fun names for, for songs. So this is... The, uh, the camel and the hairdresser. <clears throat>
you know, you had the stool squeaking along in time. Oh, and you're no. like, and go back and listen to the band, like, you guys take it, take it, yeah. Oh, I was like, oh my goodness, we got new instruments left and right. And Tony, you're playing an electric bass. It's yeah. kind of like a stand-up bass, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the big bassy part. Yeah. It it's, looks cool. It's a, called a electric stand-up, and um, it's actually not modeled after the scale of an acoustic. It's got a rock bass scale of 24 inches. Oh, okay. Um, the acoustic bass has a longer uh, neck and uh, notes are further apart. Right. Plus the action just absolutely sucks. The act, you know, normal action is like really high, so you have to be like a, like a butcher guy, you know, like really big hands and the- uh, Sausage yeah. fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, so this is great to transport. I mean, if I had gotten an acoustic bass, which originally wanted, first of all, they start around $4,000 you know, for a reasonable one. And then also you have to buy a different car. Transport it. Because I mean, it's yeah, Well, I it's think huge. we need a new car, Tony. <laughs> and larger. You, you need a larger, we want longer, larger. I probably would have bought a hard shell case and just strapped it to the roof the of roof. my car. Yes, that's, that's been done. All right. Uh, do you find yourself writing a different kind of song on that than the guitar? Totally. Of course. I would and, I think, and interpreting songs on this is really interesting too, you know, because you just can't play it like a guitar or, you know, or any other instrument. It's, you know, oh. it's, it's its own, it lends itself to its own kind of direction in terms of doing cover songs and covering other songs. I, we, I don't approve right. of covers, but, you know. Well, we'll do one that's a cover from 1720. Okay, but they'll never know. They'll they yes. don't know what it's supposed to sound like. Yes, right. but yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 when I first played so, the instrument, I thought I should learn an actual piece of harp music, and so uh, this uh, we're going to do a tune called "She Begs She More." It's by a uh, famous blind Irish harpist named Turlo O'Carolan, yeah, who lived it. in the <laughs> early 1700s, and that was when he did most of his writing. Um, very interesting guy, went blind at 18, never played the harp before, and by 21 he was the most famous musician in Ireland, traveling around and, and writing songs for all the, all the rich people, which is what you did to make a living writing songs in those days. So. <laughs> Berkeley initiates uh, stuff. I've tried to come up with some chord changes, but I haven't really stuck. But the stuff we continue to play is stuff that we like and works well, and we remember. You know, it's, uh, Berkeley just is an amazing improviser, and he'll start something. I go, "Whoa, that's totally cool!" But I can't stop and take my phone out and record it. And besides, we don't really have the energy to, to go back and learn something. But so a lot of stuff just, you know, bubbles up. Yeah, we do, we do a lot of improv and we, we perform every Tuesday, it's uh, Sunday, um, Tuesday market in Gulfport in front of Sumitra. Yeah, so it's really, it's, it's really nice play, atmosphere. Um, play from about 1030 to about 1, you know, 10, yeah, around, that's 1030 to 1, so it's what mm -hmm. our window is there. And, uh, you yeah. know, and we do a lot of, really, and I also have a looper that I use, so I'll lay down a basic track here and then that way I can just noodle about on the high strings. And have, have a big time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and you know, there's not a lot of improv in anything except jazz and American pop music. You know what I mean? Or jazz rock. They'll get some improv. But I, mean, I, I in rock bands in the '80s, I was like, we would just improv because it was fun in rehearsal. But people didn't really like to listen to it. You know. And why do you think? Uh, why do you think it's fun to do, but we don't want to listen to it? Well, it, you have to be tuned in musically more than, you know, normal. I mean, to listen to pop music that you already know, it's like, oh, I like that song, I hear, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, playing uh, improv is a little bit like playing original, except you haven't written it yet. So there's even more, it's risky. I mean, you know, uh, at, at rehearsal, you do something and it, you go, eh, 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 you know, but in front of an audience, you can't really go, eh, <laughs> No, you can, but they don't, they don't appreciate it. And pure improv can occasionally lapse into a little self-indulgence, you know, if it's possible. <laughs> that, that becomes a little hard to listen to sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes people are. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, I played one all-improv band once, and I loved it. And I would, there's no way I would ever want to come hear this. Oh, <laughs> right. you know, it was like, it was so much fun to do, but it's like, yeah, it was like, so what, everybody just takes turn wailing off a solo and Depending then, on, or, yeah, sort of, it just but sometimes just, it can become, it's, it, it's every which, which way, depending on the, you know, the artistry of the yeah. players. But. I mean, the whole band can improvise simultaneously, which is, what's that uh, New Orleans style, what do you call that style? Dixieland? Yeah, it's still like totally improvising, and there's still a chord yeah. change going on. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's amazing to hear all yeah. the different parts no, weaving that's, that's done well. in and out. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say that personally, I'm very lyrically driven. Mm -hmm. Like the the part of the song that catches my attention first is is the lyrics. So I'm not too um, patient with jam bands. I guess I'd have to say. <laughs> wow, well, look at that! Uh, the truth is out. Um, I uh, think that there's time for you definitely to play us another song. Yeah. I mean, don't you think we should just get some tune playing here? Yeah. We can talk about the uh, music theory if we want. No, no, okay. no we have music theory is boring. So okay, so give us <laughs> give us another number here. Okay, uh, you want to do um, Senor? We just instrumentally. You have a microphone. Oh, right there. Oh, bloody hell! Um, it's like one that Tony sings. I didn't hook up the thing. How about Watchtower? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I'll leave you. We'll do a short version. This is when we jam out on it. At length. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that. All right, yeah. yeah. Treat us just oh. a... <laughs> but we won't. We did. We'll be nice. Just once This will be endlessly... You know. <laughs> Just once around. People will come to hear us say it's very con contemplative, it's almost like meditational. Yeah. yeah. So they're in a different space. Okay, you're looping. Tell us what you're doing there with your looping. It's, to, it's a recorder that loops what I just played. And you, pretty much everybody you see playing solo these days uses one because it's so fun and convenient to lay down something that you can then play on top of. So.
original too much. It would no. be interesting <laughs> to see if the yeah. computer algorithm can yeah, pick yeah. that out. As uh, I want to thank you all so much for coming. And your squeaky chair just cracked me up. <laughs> How? It needs I'll, oiling, I guess. I would like to give you all each of these. These are blank oh, books. Oh, and you can maybe write something. You know, it's just blank paper. Oh, I yeah, love blank you. books. Oh, yeah. the, the, the potential of blank oh. books. I ended up with a stack of them in my life because they are so not, I, I'm always like, well, I can't mess this book up. I can't write in it. It's too um, pretty. It's <laughs> too pretty. And, uh, and then before you leave, I want to give you each one of these big, Ooh, uh, you, you, you have to, we'll let you pick which one okay. you think thank is the you. most suited to you before you leave. And I thank you so much, thank you so much for, for your time. Yeah, so um, I really appreciate it. Yeah. You're, you you're coming on even more than once. You must have had fun because you wanted <laughs> oh, to come yeah. back. Yeah. So this I was thank great. You. Thank you. Laura. Yay. And yeah. uh, we'll get Mary back up here to talk yeah. about her second book. And uh, and if you want to see the pod head, you go down to the Tuesday morning market in Gulfport, Florida, between 1030 and 1 at the Sumitra. Right. It's all fresh Hi, for you now. Yes. Hi, Mary. Yay. Hi. All right. So you, you, you wrote that one book. That's right. But once and, I yes. healed, I wrote this book, ah. which is called Living in Light, Spiritual Practices for Body, Mind, and Spirit in a Post-Pandemic World. And the Wait, idea say that came, again. Say that again. Okay. It's spiritual practices, simple spiritual practices for body, mind, and spirit in a world past the pandemic. So, uh -huh. so um, I wanted it to be practices we could use at any time, but the idea came during the pandemic because there were so many mental and obviously physical health issues that people had during the pandemic and even now after the pandemic um, that I just I just came up with this idea idea of taking some of the best spiritual practices that I used it and I use spiritual kind of liberally because one of them is actually um, something called the blue mind which is being on in or near water and oh. there's a group that's studying the the mental health and the physical health effects of, of being near and on water, believe it or not, and um, it has all kinds of positive health effects. Yeah, yes. people are always saying go down yeah, to the beach. Yeah, no one's ever really studied it. Studied so about why, since, yeah, we um, know, a researcher yeah. in a past life, I thought, you What know, sort of research, wait a minute, you just throw that out there, what kind of a researcher? <laughs> I've had many lives, um, well, public health, um, oh, okay. I worked in substance abuse and mental health mostly during my career, so, but other, other odd jobs here and there, but mostly, yeah, yeah, okay. mostly that, so. Um, and at the same time, I started poetry because I felt like I needed a life beyond, you know, beyond just, you know, working nine to five. So that's when I started the poetry, and then I'm retired. So then, you know, then I started this. So so this book is, is a really simple read in terms of, okay, so let's say you're feeling a little down or a little off or something like that. You go to one of these practices, and I've got some exercises in here, and it just... I mean, I use it myself. It just picks you up because you forget. You forget. Okay. Is there a quick exercise we can all do together? I mean, I don't know. Oh. I'm just throwing it out. Uh, see, I, I'm always just like <laughs> she, surprising she, you. She she is a surprise. I'm a surprise. Or can you just describe one of us? So sure. We can, we can um, try it. I was going to do the, you know. the water one more, but um, well, we obviously can't visit an aquarium or whatever. Um, so let's see if I can. I can find spit it. in my hand to water. <laughs> Water. Well, I say the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> How about uh, four, seven, eight breathing? Okay. So um, you basically inhale for the count of four. Hold seven seconds, and then release eight. And you can make a noise when you release. And if you do that, obviously not so planned, but yeah, a couple of times, it really helps with anxiety, with um, sleep, with, with anything that might be bothering you. It's a, it's a sort of a breathwork meditation practice. Right, get a hold it's of really your breath. Easy. Yeah, or you, let's say you're in a suddenly a little bit traumatic situation or something like that. Or it's right before the show, like, the cameras are breaking. That's right, that's right. Perfect. <laughs> well, you must <laughs> question that, I, I'm startled about the answer, but, uh, but yeah, but I, but I use that a lot just to, calm myself down um, from from anything. So that's so obviously meditation, mindfulness, and breath work are uh, 
I, I lumped them all as one of the practices. And, all right. uh, and let's see, uh, also gratitude. I'm really, uh, there's actually research on having a gratitude practice and how helpful it is. I mean, all kinds of physical and mental positive effects, benefits. Right, so, I'm grateful that you all came to be on my show today. And I'm grateful that I met, ran into you. you. What are you all, great, anybody grateful for show. something out there? Yeah, oh, yay! yay. <laughs> it's not rain, pouring rain. Yay. <laughs> I'm grateful for the grace of gratitude. Grateful for the grace of gratitude. There Absolutely, you go. and I'm Absolutely. grateful for these musicians. That was fabulous. I loved it. It was we wonderful. Are so, yeah. yeah. Um, so, if I wanted either of your books, what would I do? I would go to Amazon. Um, so they're both on Amazon. Under okay. which name? Under Marielle Gordon. Marielle which Gordon, name. which is your pen This name. is sort of like a follow-on from the first one, because as you notice, the first one's a little dark, and this one is living in light. So Do we actually, have to read the dark one first? Can we just skip only, the dark only, one? <laughs> just only if you want to. Only if you feel you need or want to. So, But yeah. then there are people out there, and I'm not saying No, right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, they they need, they it, was need. A, it was an audience that I that yes. I wanted to reach, because I myself was down there. And Absolutely. Now, and it's possible to heal. So I wanted people to know that it's possible to heal, and then get I to know. Look at the, even yeah, the color of this book I know, is so much I know, nicer. and it's, it's similar, but much brighter, much brighter, yeah. So, and these are real easy, you know, real easy to do, and um, I've got poems in these too. Would so. you like to read us another poem? Sure. I like poems. I'll read, um, so, I don't think we, we get time? enough poems. Yes, we do. All right, we've got we plenty of time. time. Relax. Okay, we've got plenty of time, and I had one picked out, of course, now I... Oh, that's all right. I you just fit it? through your um, beautiful book. It is... Uh, such an achievement to have this physical book in your hand. It really was, and I had really good things along the way. I had a wonderful publisher, wonderful editors. And how did the you find these The publisher books? actually, what he does is he puts it in an Amazon format. He sends it to you with instructions. Do this, do this, do this. And then in five minutes, you can input it into Amazon, both the Kindle and the, the, um, the other one. So ones. you've sort of self-published, or is that... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like self-published, but you can do things on Amazon like you can, um, you know, advertise and stuff like that. And yeah, so um, and you can you can make a website that links to Amazon, which is the, the website up there. The website, um, which is marielle.firebase.com. And why Firebase? Because that's the person who made the website. Oh, okay. He figured out a way to do it cheaply. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, well, we like him. So, <laughs> Marielle. 